Have you ever thought about going on a roller green cruise by yourself? That may sound intimidating, but today I've got some tips for how to cruise solo the right way up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RollerCreamBlog.com. Going on a roller green cruise by yourself may sound like a weird idea, but in reality, it's an incredibly enjoyable experience. And if you've never taken a cruise solo before, it may seem off-putting, but if you talk to those that have done it before, it can be a really great decision. We were actually doing a live video here on YouTube like we do every Monday and talking about various topics by going on a cruise, and the subject of going on a solo cruise came up, and inevitably the question was, what should or shouldn't you do on a cruise if you're going all by yourself? And I certainly answered that question very briefly during that, but I asked for some suggestions from our audience as to some of their favorite going on a cruise by yourself tips. And so we've got a lot of those in addition to some of the tips I'll be sharing all about going on a cruise solo and what you should know. So let's start with number one, and that is if you're gonna book a solo cruise, a good place to start is what type of cabin to book. There are two types of cabins on Royal Caribbean in general. There's the normal cabins that have double occupancy and solo cabins. Solo cabins are staterooms designed for exactly one person. And the benefit of booking a solo cabin is that you do not pay the single supplement fee. Usually when you book any kind of stateroom on a Royal Caribbean, Royal Caribbean assumes double occupancy. So if you were to book a normal room by yourself, even though you're by yourself, no one else in the room, you'll still pay double because you're paying that single supplement fee. But if you're booking a solo cabin, then you don't have to pay the single supplement fee, which could make the price actually a little bit better. Now in practice, I'll be the first to admit sometimes it's actually the same price or cheaper to book a regular double room, even with a single supplement fee. And the reason is solo cabins are very much at a premium and they go very, very quickly. And so even if you are able to get a solo cabin, they may or may not represent that much of a good deal. Not to mention if you book a regular room and pay the single supplement fee, you actually get double credit and anchor points. So something to consider as well. But no matter which ship you're going on, check out if there are any solo cabins available for you. It might save you some money, but if you book a regular cabin as well, that's okay because again, you get those double points. And second, booking a standard cabin may provide more choices in terms of room type because with solo cabins, you're only gonna be limited to maybe usually studio interior rooms, maybe on some of the newer ships, a studio balcony or so. But if you wanna move up to the regular rooms, then you have the choices of every category that's out there. In addition, you're also gonna get a lot more living space with a regular room. Studio rooms can be a good financial decision, but they're not spacious and they rarely offer a balcony. In short, while paying a single supplement fee is not ideal, it's not the worst idea either. In fact, a lot of people who go solo book regular rooms with an eye on getting a good deal to make it worthwhile. And I'll be the first to admit, every time I've gone solo, I've stayed in a regular room. So the single supplement fee isn't the end of the world by any means. Next up, don't be afraid to dine alone. Just because you're cruising alone does not mean you should skip sit-down meals in the fabulous restaurants on your Royal Caribbean cruise. While you certainly can relegate yourself to dining in the Windjammer or Cafe Promenade and other grab-and-go spots that seem to be like a good fit for someone who's by themselves, I think you're actually doing yourself a disservice by skipping other restaurants simply because you're dining alone. Most importantly, it will not be weird or awkward if you go to a specialty restaurant or even the main dining room all by yourself. Most people don't care what you're doing and they won't even notice that you're by yourself. I know that sometimes you have this idea that like you're alone by yourself in a restaurant at home carrying a single rose and being stood up at a restaurant and it looks weird. Yeah, it's not like that on a cruise ship. Really, truly, no one will notice you're by yourself. People don't pay attention. They're on their own vacations. But most important, dining alone is not a bad thing. It should be embraced. By going solo, you get to choose the restaurants you want to dine at and eat at your pace. You don't have to worry about somebody else eating too fast or too slow for you. My next tip for someone going solo on a cruise is to splurge. If you're going to cruise alone, take advantage of the fact you only have to pay for yourself and treat yourself. After all, this is your vacation, so enjoy it. Book a massage at the spa, maybe try a new shore excursion, pick up an unlimited alcohol package, or upgrade to a nicer stateroom and make your solo cruise your best one yet. Another great tip if you're cruising solo is to talk to the crew members on board. While you may not know any other guests on board, make a special effort to talk to the crew. Royal Caribbean crew members are friendly to all guests to begin with. So if you're cruising solo, getting a chance to talk up your waiters, stateroom attendant, or bar servers is a great way to not only feel like you're talking to other people, but you also get to know some really fun and interesting folks along the way. Crew members are not just a great communication outlet. They are a great resource for learning tips and tricks about where you're visiting because they've been there like a bazillion times, as well as hearing some fun stories about past cruises. Now, if you are cruising solo, maybe you want to meet some people from the internet. I know that used to be a little stranger than it really is today, but if you'd like to see a few friendly faces on your ship, make an effort prior to your cruise to meet other people who will be on your sailing via the internet. 
One thing the internet is fabulous at is helping to connect people. Now, there's a lot of ways you can meet people who are going to be on your sailing. I'd be remiss if I did not mention the fact that on royalcoreanblog.com, we have our message boards and there is a roll call forum where you can find other people on your sailing. In addition, you can search for Facebook and try to find a sailing there by simply searching for the ship name that you're on and the date you're sailing. You never know what you may find. And of course, you have no obligation, by the way, to spend any time with any of these people that are you find online. However, you never know who you might meet. And even if you do go to a get together to share a bus on an excursion or just a couple of drinks at the bar, it can be a fun opportunity to talk to other people. My next solo tip is to travel at your pace. Cruising solo means you get to do what you want when you want it. When you cruise with other people, almost anything you do involves ensuring they want to do it as well, unless you are inconsiderate, of course. <laughs> but cruising solo is all about you. When you cruise solo, you can be as flexible as you like and try something you've always wanted to experience. When you're by yourself, you can easily pivot and do things on the fly as there's no collaborative element involved. Not having any plan may feel like you're almost naked at some point, but it's another way to have a different type of day on Royal Caribbean. Spontaneity is one of the highlights of being a solo on a cruise. And again, when you decide I've had enough of this, you get to move on to something else. You don't have to say there, you know, do you want to leave soon? What do you think? What do you want to do next? None of that. You get to do what you want when you want it. I absolutely love it. Another good tip for making you feel like you're a little less alone is to share your experience. Social media can be your lifeline of the outside world. While there's something to be said for actually experiencing what you're doing rather than sharing the supposed experience, a solo trip is somewhat different because it gives you a chance to engage with others. Part of what makes the trip with others fun is sharing those little moments on the cruise with somebody else. Sharing online provides a quick and easy way to have a semblance of that while still traveling solo. There are a lot of great online groups and forums that you would be not only welcome to be joining a member of, but relish in living vicariously through your adventures. And of course, yes, we have another shameless plug, ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Korean blog message boards have a live blog area so you could share your experiences while you're on the ship and get feedback instantly. It's really nice to be able to have that kind of back and forth with folks and in a way to kind of also be able to bring others on with you. And I think it helps you feel a little less by yourself. Oh, and be sure to bring an external battery charger for your phone. The dullness of sitting around by yourself can dramatically increase your phone usage, which will then drain your battery. So it might be a good idea to invest in a battery charger. Next up, try lots of activities. If you're feeling lonely or simply want to meet other guests on board, embrace the daily activities offered on your cruise ship. Your cruise director and staff pack the cruise compass with lots of great activities from morning to late night. And that means there's plenty of opportunity to meet other people on board. Since all the events involve many guests, the fact that you're by yourself is irrelevant. It's not only a great way to get involved with the fun on board, but you get immersed with other guests and you may find yourself making new friends. Cruising solo may allow you to get out of your usual cruise routine and try something completely different to yourself. Having the opportunity to see shows, participate in contests, or get together for meets is a great way to not only expand your Royal Caribbean cruise experience, but trick up the conversation with others. And my last tip for cruising solo is to take a class or tour. Royal Caribbean offers a number of classes and tours that are perfect for any number of guests, including solo cruisers. Maybe sign up for a cooking class, try out a fitness course, or take a behind the scenes tour of the ship. These are just some of the fun ways to participate on board. And moreover, these activities are intrinsically enjoyed alone, which makes them perfect for solo cruisers. Now, like I said, those are my tips, but as I mentioned earlier, I had a lot of tips from our Royal Caribbean blog viewers here on YouTube who wanted to share their own solo tips. So let's start off with why to cruise solo. Good question to start with. Amy Ferguson said, I love solo trips. I like to take three night cruises and really get away from the world. I turn my phone off. I lounge by the pool all day, eat in the buffet or Sorrento's and dive into a book and escape. And Rhonda Parker says, did what I wanted when I wanted highly recommend. Now, how do you meet people if you're feeling lonely? Maybe after a couple days, the novelty wears off. Josh Carruthers shared, for me, it starts pre-cruise by joining a roll call on the message boards or a Facebook group, a fast and easy way to meet people. While on board, going to trivia, someone will invite you to join their group. I've also met people while checking in at bars or just watching sports, like, you know, liking the same teams. D Alt also mentioned participating in excursions and meeting those people you tour with is a good idea. And Adrian O'Sullivan says, sea-loving nerdy introverts like me are probably perfectly happy just being at sea. We're not necessarily on board to meet people. A good book and a good pair of binoculars are all I need for companionship. And as it relates to dining by yourself, Al Redden shared, the main thing I find helpful when cruising solo is selecting the assigned seating option for dinner. And Warren Hall added, the only challenge for me are meals, so I usually go to the buffet. 
Thank you to everybody who shared these great tips. And I'd love to hear in the comments below, what are your favorite tips for cruising solo? And if you've never cruised solo, but you thought about doing it, let me know also, what are you thinking about? What is holding you back from trying a solo trip? Now, if it's, of course, a spouse who's jealous that they won't be able to go with you, that one I haven't figured out a solution to yet either. But let me know your best solo cruising tips in the comments below. While you're down there, make sure you like this video, hit that like button. It really helps us out. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications. So that way we have a brand new video to share. You get told about it right away. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.